Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Walk Away from the Fool, the Stubborn, and the Rebellious. Walk Away from the Fool, the Stubborn, and the Rebellious. Praise God. Praise God. For those individuals who finally, after all these years, got away from the fool, from the stubborn, from the rebellious, from the stubborn, difficult relative to the rebellious adult son or daughter, someone got away. Praise God, praise God, praise God. But we still have many more in this network and elsewhere that are still seated at the table among individuals who are ungodly, unrighteous, foolish, stubborn, rebellious. We still have many more lending over great talents, skills, gifts to leaders who are fools, stubborn, and rebellious. We still have children running into the arms, visiting individuals, riding or walking with the foolish, the stubborn, and the rebellious. We still are burying old fools, stubborn-hearted, and rebellious, so-called special, unique, different appreciate it or whatever else but still an old fool in the ground six feet deep when will people wake up well the lord said that there was this season if some of you all have been listening for years where we were giving you warnings that you need to separate you need to walk away from you need to let go of those individuals who have not uplifted you, not encouraged your walk with the one true God. But the Lord spoke into my spirit and said that for those individuals who still have trouble walking away, the individuals who are the fools and the stubborn and the rebellious, God will allow some things to happen in the form of accidents, in the form of natural causes, in the form of someone just simply doing some things to oneself that will cause these individuals to be prematurely put in their graves. You could have walked away and saved yourself the grief a long time ago. You could have been the one who allowed the separation to remove those old feelings, those soul ties. But rather than allow those things to take place because, oh, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. You didn't know what God was doing. Because you see, God knows the future and he knows that when we keep ties, connections to individuals who have demonstrated foolish, stubborn, rebellious sort of behavior, we end up being swept under the rug right along with them. We end up having mountain upon mountain of trouble right along with them. We will feel the feelings of defeat. You know the devil doesn't want us victorious. You know the devil doesn't want us dancing around, singing, saying hallelujah. You know the devil doesn't want us focused on the one true God, being men and women of faith. You know better. Because some of you all, you argue with these individuals. Some of you all, you gave them the silent treatment. Some of you others, you have been passive aggressive with some of these individuals. And the Lord has been telling you that acting like the fool, acting like the stubborn, acting like the rebellious is not getting you anywhere. Seated in the bed or laying in the bed and seated in a chair next to the fool, the stubborn and the rebellious is doing nothing more than corrupting your good manners. 
being that one that wants to be the life of the party right along with the fool, the stubborn and the rebellious, and going along with programming just like everyone else is doing nothing more than causing some of you all who you know you have been called not to do certain things. To keep running back and forth to doctors. To keep getting on the phone complaining about your woes. Didn't the Lord tell you not to do some things? Ooh, come on. Didn't we tell you? But you said we was fools. You said we were stubborn. You said we were rebellious. Meanwhile, you don't know that God has been moving men and women. Even in this season. To be major and minor prophets. Lord Jesus. Let us go back, shall we? To... Major prophets of the Bible, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. These were prophets that covered a significant time span. They presented a wide array of messages. Okay. Isaiah spoke to the nation of Judah about 150 years before their exile into Babylonia and called them to be faithful to God. And for some of you all, if you're not familiar with uh, the studies related to the major prophets, there are books out there, one of which is called the Major Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, and it's part of a collection that is by Big Dream Ministries. So for those who want to study the major prophets, so be it. Because sometimes I've got to remind some of you all that the prophets are still very much their gifting if you will is still very much being dispensed upon us modern day individuals and some folks don't want to believe that because they don't believe in God and therefore when you don't believe in God you have trouble studying a lot of things related to the one true God and the people of God you have trouble trying to understand what is it that the people of God are saying doing why are they distributing this message in this way as opposed to that one well the worldly minded the one who has been trained brainwashed taught a certain way is only accustomed to what the world teaches preaches and tells you what the next popular word is in an algorithm mm -mm. and as long as you go along with the programming you get promoted and when you don't you get demoted jesus prophets prophets lord jesus the prophet is there to warn you oh foolish stubborn rebellious one before you get your butt whip in before you lose your money, before you lose your health. Why do they keep getting on my back about doing this? Says the rebellious one who's sitting back comfortable. I don't need to see text after text message about the same old, same old. I know what I'm supposed to do, but are you doing it? Some of us parents, we get frustrated. I've told you to do A, B, C, D. This is how you're going to get set up for your freedom, for your independence. For the lifestyle that you once had, but it's going to be better if you just follow A, B, C, D. The rebellious, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. Ah, uh, I want to do something else. Ah, uh, I wish you guys would just stop. Ah, uh, everybody always wants to tell me this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And then when that one sinks, they're putting their hands up or calling you. <laughs> Please get me out the water. Help me. No, the prophet is not coming as the rescuer. I have to tell somebody that who does have a prophetic messaging, gifting, God is using you on a whole nother topic or topics. You're not there to be the one to give your money away. You're not there to be there to open up your doors. Some of you all, you don't even have any doors to open up. You living with somebody else. Come on, I'm putting my hand up. So then what are we doing? We are warning we are telling some individuals that your butt whipping is coming. God has had enough of your prayers from 1970 plus, 1980 plus, 1990, 2000 plus, and on and on and on. It's the same old, same old. 
The Lord says, when will you listen, O stubborn one, foolish one, rebellious one? I'm not that one. She's not talking about me because I pray or I listen to the word or I go to the church or I've been a Christian for umpteen years. You can't tell me this or that. Yeah, you've been a backsliding Christian for umpteen years. You've been a lukewarm Christian for umpteen years. And what did the scripture say? God will spit you out. And that's what he's been doing. We've been watching this sort of thing play out. And every time we try to interject, every time we try to intervene, every time we try to put our little two cents in, God says, did I tell you to speak? Oh, yeah, that's right. And that's why some of you suffer because you're speaking when you're not supposed to speak. You're arguing with people when you're not supposed to argue. God told you to keep your mouth shut and you still giving them advice. They don't want your advice. Keep your mouth shut. I had to learn that one the hard way. For some individuals, they don't want to hear from you. Don't you see? They don't care. Don't you see that you have done more than enough? Don't you see that they're not giving you anything? So when this sort of thing happens, you fall back. When this sort of thing happens, you wait for God to give you further instruction. When this sort of thing happens, if God wants you to shut it all down, you're going to shut it all down. Or somebody else will. But either way, you got all that you're going to get in this hour, in this season. This is somebody's message. You see? Stubborn. Stubbornness. I don't want to do. I don't feel like it costs too much money. That's your song. That's your dance. And God says, I know what it costs. I know it's going to be an inconvenience. I know that when you get to this place or that one, it's going to be problems. Haggai. Lord Jesus. Haggai. Let's talk about Haggai. And some of you all who are not familiar with your Bible, you'll be like, who's Haggai? Haggai is in the Bible. Haggai was a prophet. Now, you see, to summarize this, there were some exiles that had returned from Babylon, okay? And in this particular season of their lives, they had experienced all sorts of bitter disappointments, okay? And they were given help and they were given their share of encouragement and so forth. And then when it was this season that they were set up to experience this happiness, you know, there was going to be this material prosperity and all this. And some of you all, you remember some of those, some of those messages where, it was some years back where there was some happiness and some positivity and some, you know, prosper, prosperity and so forth. But then there was also the underlying feeling or those sentences that I dropped that it was like, no, no, please tell me it's not going to be some negativity in the future. Please tell me that, you know, I'm not going to lose my job or I'm not going to experience any, you know, death in the family. Please tell me that everything's going to be good. And no, for some of you all, you heard, you felt, you knew. And so you prepared yourself like the ant. So that way, when all the negativity over these years had taken place, you was already good to go. You either removed yourself, you distanced yourself, you know, you faced the truth for what it was and you no longer went along with the lies and the false hopes and somebody else's conditioning and all that well going back to Haggai Haggai had to preach a tough message Haggai had to be that spokesman for Yahweh okay Lord Jesus and you know sometimes when you're that spokesman or spokeswoman for God people don't like what you have to say People start calling you a false prophet or they start talking about you don't know what you're talking about or she done, you know, went off a rocker, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, ha ha he he, until you know that child was right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You see. So there was this promise that people were going to experience this great happiness and material prosperity, but 
It didn't come like they thought it was going to come when they thought it was going to come. And some of you all, that's where you are right now. Oh, my health is going to get better as a result of what I did. Things are going to be, you know, wonderful. And instead, you look around and things are worse. Lord Jesus, I'm speaking somebody's truth. They can't speak it because they're keeping secrets. Mm, right. But all of these sorts of things start to take place. And somebody goes, I thought, I thought, I thought. You see, it was going to be better. It was going to be good. So around this time when Haggai is giving his prophetic message and he's speaking for Yahweh, instead of these people seeing great happiness and material prosperity, the neighboring states, they had a hostile attitude toward the Hebrews. Okay. And so the Hebrews were given this calling. They were supposed to be rebuilding walls of their city and all this other stuff. And the folks around them was get, making things difficult. You see. So while they're working on a project that God called them to, they had to keep swords close by just in case my enemy shows up. Just imagine. And for some of you all, you work in conditions where I got to make sure I keep my peace in the car. I never know when I might have to take a walk out to the car. I never know if I got to open up my drawer or pop open my purse. You see, because people do things and it's messing with their minds. They're angrier now. Some of you all, you may have noticed this. They're angrier now. Well, they got all these substances in their body and the substances are counteracting. You see. And so, as I told you in another audio a while back to try to prep you for all this pain to come with people and we're coming into that season where there's going to be all this pain and when people are in pain they start losing it they start losing it they start saying things they have no business saying they start doing things they have no business doing you see for some folks they're not getting better they're getting worse but they're not going to tie things to what they did you know, in recent months, because, well, I'm okay. I'm all right. Yeah. But it takes time for some things to take effect. You see, so the rebellious and the stubborn, mm, Lord Jesus, they push back. All they want is for you to say, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. Pray for me. I need a miracle or whatever else you see. But you got to go through the fire. That's somebody. I'm speaking to somebody. You got to go through the fire because you opened up your mouth. And you opened up your mouth saying that God said when God didn't really say. That's a cutting truth. Man said. Programming said. But God didn't say. And now there's blood on some people's hands because of the words that they spoke. That's a secret. You see. Some people are bound, they're chained to what came out of their mouths. Haggai's message, it was one that was of reproof because there were folks that started neglecting. Lord Jesus, hear me closely. They started neglecting what it was that God wanted them to do. In this case, God wanted them to rebuild the temple so that he might dwell in their midst. Okay, Lord Jesus. But you know what happens when you got friends since a wife. I got to make it plain for some of you all, since you don't read scripture and you don't know nothing about Haggai and the temple and it's not sitting with you. But let's say that there's a wife and a wife tells the husband, I need you to do A, B and C because when the storms come, we don't want a leaky roof. Or. I need you to make sure that the furnace filters are replaced or the gutters and the downspouts are cleaned out, Lord Jesus. And that man goes, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But instead, he wants to sit on his behind and he wants to watch the game on his days off. I shouldn't even say the game. It's many games. Hours upon hours. This is my time. I pay for this. I do this. I'm the, you know, one that wears the pants up in here and whatever else. But then let's fast forward. And now the storms are coming. And now the furnace isn't kicking out the heat that it should be kicking out. 
And now the gutters are sagging. Downspouts and so forth are clogged. And she's looking at him crooked-eyed. And she's upset. And she had her share of issues when it came to finances. That's why she called on him, but he didn't want to spend his money. Lord Jesus. You see, God has a way of moving on us. Even when it's something that fits with modern day times. Just as he moved on Haggai to give a message to tell these people, you're supposed to be working on a temple. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And now we got the, these troubles. We got lack of materials. For some of you all, you got lack of financing to get some things done. You see. And the scripture says that, that compared to what they had before. This new temple they had erected was poor. So sure. Okay. Fine. We got the temple. Yeah. Yahweh's around. But it's not anything like what we had before. You see. Somebody was stubborn. Come on, say that. Somebody was rebellious. Come on. Somebody had all sorts of issues going on. And that's why they're reaping. Zechariah, another prophet. Zechariah, he was bringing a message of hope and encouragement to those who returned from the exile. See, God will send another prophet. First, the first prophet was about the project. The next prophet shows up, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I'm getting some revelation about some things in my personal life. Hallelujah. Then God will send another prophet. And that prophet isn't preaching about the project. Isn't teaching about the project. But is giving you the necessary information, the wisdom, the step-by-step -step program, the community resources or whatever else so that there's a transformation, Lord Jesus. There's the motivation. There's the inspiration. That's what these messages over the years did for some of you all. For some of the messages, the actual falling out, the trials, the criticisms about the relatives or what have you. The cautionary warnings that God himself used my mouth to speak. That didn't resonate with some of you all. Like it should have. So instead there were some other messages that wasn't so direct, so convicting. But there was something in the wisdom in talking about somebody else's situation. That created this moral transformation within you, Lord Jesus. And therefore, there was the cleansing of the evil. Recognizing the evil for what it is. The stubbornness, the rebellion, right? Some folks, they even discovered there was some conceit there. Some attitude. Mm, mm, mm. I can't be this way. It's not working. It's not in my best interest. I'm falling further away from the Lord. I got to do something about this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes the prophet gets these signs and visions and strange language. And some of you all pick it up because it's for you. Other ones won't because that's not what God wants you to hear. He wants you to hear just the plain. <laughs> The straightforward, the direct part of the message. Sometimes it has to be a spirit that shows up in the house. And some folks want to call it a devil because it's so scary. But it's, you know, the angels at work to shake some people up. And this is a season where people are more, <laughs> more likely to receive a message during a spooky season than they were any other time of the year. So let's get spooky, shall we? Let's send some angels to some people's households. 
Let's wake them up in the middle of the night and let them see a vision, a vision, Lord, that you have called them to see through the mirror rather than one that the demonic has called them to see through the mirror. Lord Jesus, let them see signs, visions and wonders as they are walking among men and women that are enemies, that they don't know are enemies, that are the stubborn, the unrighteous, the rebellious. The fool. Hallelujah. Malachi, another prophet. Speaking to those who are stubborn. Speaking to those who are rebellious. Speaking to those who are foolish. There's always some exiles. Some of you all. Exiles, banished, told to get gone. Exiles, forgot about, in the jail, Lord Jesus. And my heart goes out to brothers and sisters in jail who listen. Just taking a moment because my spirit is heavy right now. Malachi was given an explanation of the situations. He was a messenger. Can I tell you, you don't have to be a great prophet to give a message, a word of encouragement to a fellow brother or sister in Christ, to an exiled brother or sister who may not be about the Christian faith or any type of faith. But here's a word, brother. Stay strong. You can do this. Brighter days are ahead. There are people on the outside that still got love for you, that still got respect for you, that still want what's best for you. Yet I've loved Jacob, but Esau I've hated. And I've turned his mountains into a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. What does it take for a man, for a woman, to stop being stubborn? Misfortunes. What does it take for a man or a woman or a teenager, or a young adult, or an adult who knows better to get right with the one true God. Misfortunes. What does it take for an old fool to do right? To speak the kind of truth that God wants them to speak. To live their last days according to the will of God. It takes misfortunes. It takes the stress and the burdens. It takes the tears falling down one's eyes. It takes sickness. It takes your money getting messed with, played with, taken away. How long do I have to keep taking things away from people? How long do I have to keep sending bodies to funeral homes to be prepared for burial? I saw a sign not that long ago. If some of you are trying to create a budget for somebody who you know, you can feel in your spirit, they're checking out of here. You want all the bells and whistles on the low end? $10,000. So you better pull out a life insurance policy on someone or encourage them or yourself to have more than $10,000. Lord Jesus, how long? How long? People was looking to be blessed too, even during the time of Malachi. Giving them words of encouragement. Giving them warnings. Still saying that God loves you despite all of your misfortunes. 
but why lord why am i going through why am i in this crappy town says someone why am why am i going through with these people at this job i gotta keep my mouth shut i gotta keep my mouth shut they don't respect me they don't like my suggestions i could tell their deep sides their eye rolls they talking about me they're doing it all wrong God withholds his blessings because you got stubborn, rebellious people around you. Some of you all, you got to see stubborn and rebellion for you to see that you're stubborn, stubborn and rebellious. Some folks, they got to see the foolish in front of them before they realize, oh, I'm acting foolish. Yes. And that's why the kids laugh at you. That's why the kids don't have respect for you. That's why the kids are saying whatever and doing whatever. Because, hey, I can see where you're making stupid decisions. So why should I listen to you? I'm going to cut my own path. I'm going to do my own thing. Our God, Yahweh, he expects nothing but the best. Our God. Alpha, Omega, he doesn't want just a half you know what kind of job. Some folks been robbing God for a long time. That's why you pray. Whenever somebody gives me some money, I pray. I say, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this money? He said, isn't there a bill that you were supposed to pay? That's right. Lord Jesus. Some of you all, God, he gives you a command when it comes to money. Sometimes that command comes through the partner. Sometimes that command comes through the children. Or it may be just a suggestion. This is just a suggestion concerning money. But when you're used to being in control until you're out of control and you know you're out of control, but you don't want to acknowledge that you're out of control. You go ahead on and you keep doing what you've always done with your money. And so you run through that money. And you end up running through your credit too. Lord Jesus. Back in those days, there were men that divorced their wives because they wanted to marry women of foreign ancestry, right? Some folks, oh, I want a certain type of mix. They're ordering up women, and some women too, ordering up men. Like somebody orders a hamburger with extra cheese, some onion, or no onion, and no cheese, or whatever. And so you do this sort of thing, and you outside the will of the Lord. Because some people don't question why it is that they want what they want. God knows why you want what you want. Because that one had the eyes that look like that one that got away years ago. Or that one got the body build of the one that you had to fallen out years ago. And when you get involved with certain people, they start triggering some emotions. And when they start triggering some emotions, now you're trying to get rid of them. The rebellious man goes off down this rabbit hole trying to get whoever and whatever. And the Lord says, what about the wife that you already had? Mm. But, but, but the Lord says, no, buts. you got to work with who you have right now, but I don't want to, and I don't have to. And so he goes off and then later on, years later, he comes back around and he's sorry that everything went down in the way that they went down. You want your blessing, stick to what God is telling you. I got to tell somebody you want your blessing. Why don't you go in a different direction and admit that this mission, you failed. I was playing this game with my son. We, you know, going old school. We in the arcade, right? I'm having a good old time. I'm, you know, on the, on the Star Wars game, right? And I had a mission. I had one job. Next thing you know, Dark Vader gets in front. And I was supposed to be blowing up something or whatever. And instead, Darth Vader, he's easing in, easing in, and I'm not controlling my ship in a way that I'm supposed to be controlling my ship. And I'm not pressing that button as fast as I'm supposed to press the button in order to blow up this building or whatever that Darth Vader had. Darth Vader gets in, zooms in on me, and blows me up. Lord Jesus. You got one mission. And somebody doesn't want 
to follow through on their mission. And when somebody doesn't want to follow through on their mission, you fail. Your mission may have been to be the good husband. So how come you're not acting like the good husband? Your mission could have been to be the good wife. So how come you're not acting like that? Your mission, God may have put you on, is to help your son or to help your daughter in this season. And no, it's not about everybody else. It's just that one son or that one daughter. So how are you doing? Are you being difficult? Are you being controlling? Are you being abusive Mm -hmm. emotionally and or physically? You got one mission. Your mission could be to travel from one state to the next state and you're supposed to have everything taken care of. Money is supposed to be right. Check. Job is supposed to be there. Check. The visit there to the new area, facility, whatever, supposed to be there. Check. Some folks, you don't have no checks on anything. You just running your mouth. Lord Jesus. And God says, why do people pray? Why do they ask me? To do these things, but yet they got other agendas. The Lord says, Isaiah 65, 2, I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. All the day. It doesn't stop with him. He doesn't have to go to sleep at night. He doesn't have to check in for work and check out and all this. Isaiah 65, 2, I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. He don't have a wife or a husband to answer to. He don't have these children that in the worldly sense. He's caring for instead he's caring for us in a spiritual realm. He's got spiritual agendas, spiritual programs. Come on. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. And it's interesting because we can see in modern day technology, what are they doing? Following their own devices. We were driving down the road. My son looks over. He says, why is that man not on a sidewalk? I said, because he's in his phone, I can tell by the way his head is positioned. Sure enough, we drove by. What I tell you? He's on his phone. Willing to put his life at risk because whatever he's seeing in that phone is just so good. Lord Jesus. Out there walking in the street with his head down, looking at his phone. You got some people that are deceiving one another, saying, no, girl, she ain't talking about you. You're not rebellious. You're not stubborn. You're not a fool. See, that's why I don't like messages like that. That's why I can't get down. I can't listen to people like that. You see, Uh uh-huh. Second Thessalonians 2, 3, let no one deceive you. That person is a deceiver. Because this message should be convicting. This message should give you a little bit of attitude. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. See, the rebellion has come first. People not listening to God, the people of God, doing what they want to do, bringing all sorts of self-destruction on themselves. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness, right? There's many of these satanic type of individuals. They're lawless. They're promoting lawlessness. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. But there's one that's coming, that he is the whole kit and caboodle, (laughs) He is the grand finale of lawlessness and he will be revealed. And then soon to follow is going to be all of the destruction coming in full force. Y'all, you, you all, you're just getting a taste. You're just getting a taste of it. When these seasons come where, oh my goodness, all these people going, oh, they're going home to be with Jesus. Not necessarily. There's a lot of them that's going straight to hell. That's why we got to make sure that our acts are together in Jesus mighty name. Numbers 14, 9, only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land for they are bred for us. See, their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. The Lord is with us. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they thumb down. I don't care what comments that they leave that they don't like. And I don't care what somebody back in the day said. The point is, is that if we're not going to get our acts right, then destruction is well-deserved. The hardship, the misfortune is well deserved because God is only going to tell you. But so many times, just like I've said in other audio years back, the parent is only going to tell you, child, only so much. Lord Jesus. And then the destruction comes because sometimes that's what it takes, right? It takes somebody to have to run away. Some of you all that major news story where the young lady, Lord Jesus, 
ends up going off with a boyfriend? You think that there wasn't signs leading up to her going on this little escapade with him, thinking, well, maybe it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. It's going to be wonderful. And then, uh uh-uh. I'm tired of your mouth. I'm tired of you bringing up some old stuff. I could see them in a vision. I could see them. They were in that van and everything's good. And then she starts bringing up stuff about this female and what he did and what he said. And then he's already in a funky mood. And she wants to keep talking and he doesn't want to hear it. And so, you know what? Let me pull this van over. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm feeling emotional right now. We got some kind of uncanny connection to emotionally abusive and physically abusive people as well as the emotionally abused and physically abused because it wasn't a one-sided type of thing. They were both going at it like some of you all back in the day and like what we remember with Whitney and Bobby back in the day. You mouthing off. We on this trip. We having a good old time doing what we doing. Like some of you all back in the day remember the Chris Brown and the Rihanna. It's back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attitudes. And then the rebellious, the stubborn, the I'm going to stay, the fool. I got to stay. You're not good for each other. You don't understand. We do understand. Leave that person alone. And then the bad stuff happens. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Wake up, somebody. Some folks is being called all sorts of names. It may not sound harsh, but some folks don't like to be called. Even the names that God calls them out on. Well, then if you don't want that sort of thing get away get gone do right I don't like the way he talks about me I don't like the way she says this that and the other I don't like her tone of voice it triggers me then leave then leave but I can't right now because of this and that there are people out there that will be more than happy to help you national domestic violence hotline community resources city state put in what your problem is come on A fool takes no pleasure in understanding. I'm trying to reason with you. I'm trying to make you understand. I'm trying to get you to see the light. I didn't use the scriptures. I didn't use personal experience and observation. I didn't talk about the prophets. I I don't know what else I can do. Proverbs 18 2. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. But you see, I love him. But you see that this isn't a good time. Oh, but you know the money situation. Oh, but you know, I, I, I thought that this was a good opportunity. Look for another one. Look for another job. This is breaking your family down. There's separation. There's division. You could save your family. You could do what's right. If you would just, if you would just, but no, 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 this is what I want. This is how I want it. And I don't care. And you guys are going to beat by, you're going to dance by my drum. Oh my goodness. Lord Jesus. That's a fool. That's a narcissistic fool. That's a crazy making fool. That's an emotionally abusive fool. That's a physically abusive fool because some of them will say all that and then slap you, then push you, kick you, spit on you. Proverbs 29, 11. Notice 9, 11, 9, 1, 1 situation for someone. Proverbs 29, 11, A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. For right now, I can't, I can't go, I can't do certain things, but what I can do is keep my mouth shut. He don't need to know what my plan is. She don't need to know what I'm up to. All you need to know is that I'm going to do what I need to do. Okay, so you coming out of the fool zone. (laughs) The danger zone is a fool zone. Danger zone. Look. (laughs) Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 18, 6, a fool's lips walk into a fight. Oh, so this is what you want. I'm going to give you. Boom. Proverbs 18, 6, a fool's lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. Proverbs 29, 9, if a wise man has an argument with a fool, let me tell you something. Let me look. Uh uh-uh. And then they start that clapping their hands and rolling their neck or whatever else. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, 
The fool only rages and laughs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you right where I want you. See how emotional you are? You see how immature? You just like what I said. If a wise man has an argument with a fool, the fool only rages and laughs, and there's no quiet. There's no quiet. Some of you all, you heard your neighbors. Some of you all, you witnessed your neighbors. You looking foolish right there, my man, going back and forth with that girl. You looking real foolish. You say you mature? Walk. Do what you need to do. <laughs> I've seen my share of foolish behavior. I've been a part of that foolish behavior. Popo showed up on some foolish behavior. So I know what you're saying. But it's about what you're doing. I think I've made it as plain as I can possibly make it. I'm not going to go any further. I thank you all for your time, for your patience. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that all individuals who this message, message resonates, who you know people like this, <laughs> I pray in Jesus' name that if the Lord moves you to get them some help, then get them some help. If the Lord moves you to get away from them, then get away, get gone. If the Lord moves you to simply pray behind closed doors, then pray your last prayer and then pray for somebody else who needs some help. But whatever you do, get away from this. Get away from this. I got to leave you with this one final scripture. Proverbs 26, 3, 12. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own ass. Whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. So don't be sharing your messages or somebody else's messages over to some family members about what all going to happen, what's going to go down or whatever else. Don't be using other people to go up to the boss and tell them this, that, and the other. And you know that what's coming out your mouth is foolish. And he already said he can't work it out, can't do it. It's not functional. We don't have the money, but yet you want to keep running your mouth. Come on now. Whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet. You cutting off your money. Because they're going to go back and say, well, Jamie or Tim or Bob said, whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like a lame man's legs, which hang useless, is a proverb in the mouth of fools. That's it. Blessings to you. Thank you as always for taking time out to listen. May you be blessed in your understanding of this message. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We also welcome giving and thank you in advance.